Ah, ok. Adesso ci conosce uh, ancora. I got a message saying meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Oh, ok. Well, then let's suppose that we are live on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> And hopefully in the perfect group. I just double check if we're in the group. If something is going on there. Yeah, we are actually. Good. Looks like it works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I hope I can see our ladies coming in. Let's just give them a moment to maybe come in and tell us that they're here or maybe just um, say that they hear us or that they see us well. No one is here yet. Maybe they're super busy in this cold weather, <laughs> going for a walk in the fresh air. Um, well, I can't see them yet, but we know that we are live on Facebook and that is wonderful. And I think we just start. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I have the pleasure to introduce to, to you all Francesca Baracchi. She is actually um, a neuroscientist. She holds a PhD in neuroscience and she has specialized on perinatal psychology. And now she's also a mom of two beautiful daughters. And what she Uh, foc focuses in the last couple of years is the so-called fourth trimester and I'm really happy to have her here tonight thank you that you're here Francesca thank you Claudia for the invitation my you're pleasure welcome. to be here <laughs> because you know I think this topic is so utterly important and so um, unknown at the same time And I meet many people in the postpartum time where I really think like it would have been so helpful for them to just know about this special period that we call the fourth trimester. And I maybe would like to just like outline a little bit what is meant by this term fourth trimester. Yeah, the fourth trimester is the period that goes from the birth of the baby until the end of the third month. So it's basically um, uh, the first trimester outside the womb, but because it's a very special time um, from a neuro neurological point of view from the baby and a developmental point of view. Um, and because the, the needs of the baby are very specific and very peculiar, is a transitional period. Um, we started to call it the fourth trimester as the fourth trimester of pregnancy. So mm -hmm. the baby is born, but it's still very much a part of the diet, mom and baby together. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes it's difficult for mom to understand that, yeah, the baby is outside of their body, but their body is still very much needed for, for that baby. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, um, it's a very special time that in the last few years has been recognized as a very important time also for the development of the baby. And as I said, is a transitional period between you know, the pregnancy, so the life inside the womb, where we know now that, you know, babies already are learning, exercising their muscles and doing all sorts of activities and the life in the, in the real world. So yeah. it's, a, it's a big transition for the baby. And I think, you know, what is also so important is that to really uh, uh, mention that all this knowledge um, is actually a newer knowledge, let's say. So, usually the, our moms or our, um, yeah, the closest family members, they didn't know all these things when they had their babies. And this is one reason for all these kind of myths um, that are thrown on new moms or all these kind of advices that can really cause stress. And the reason is that the knowledge is not yet so implemented and, um, And therefore, if you search, for example, on Google, this gives you like a bunch of information, but 
but you never know where the source is. Is there a real source or is it really a profound source that you could rely on or not? And with the family members, the same. They mean their best, but as they do not really have the newest knowledge, those advices often cause stress in new moms. Absolutely. Yeah. It's very, very true. It's a um, big difference between um, this generation of mom and even the, the women that gave birth, I would say, 20 or 15 years ago, it's very, very recent that, um, you know, now in neuroscience, we have all sorts of tools where we can study things in a, a scientifically ac accurate way yeah. that was not possible before. So we have actually biological, neurological, chemical evidence that um, during this period, the babies need very much um, the mom, the contact with the mom yes. um, in order to, uh, to develop um, and, you know, grow and uh, th thrive in, uh, in the months and the years, of course, to come. And, exactly, uh, because like the, the impact that, um, that the bonding or let's say how, how the baby is allowed to be close to the parents um, has such a big impact on even their brain development. Absolutely. That is just, uh, is, it's so essential to know about this. Yes, uh, actually, we know now that, um, you know, oxytocin is this hormone that is released in the brain during breastfeeding, of mm -hmm. course, but it's called the, um, the love hormone, the, lo the, the human contact hormone. And it's massively released basically when you're, in, you're hugging somebody, you're touching somebody skin to skin with the baby. And these hormones is something that helps the baby form the new connection between the neurons in the brain. So it's very much needed. It's, it's very beneficial for the brain of the baby. Um, and so during the fourth trimester, you know, because the baby only wants to be on us um, and it's completely normal, <laughs> yeah. you know, <laughs> it's it, their brain is completely always flooded by the with this hormone that mm. helps them to uh, learn basically yeah. you know to connect their neurons that they're not very much connected at birth yeah. um, in order to make sense of the world that is um, outside of the womb yeah and it's also it's also uh, uh, explaining why babies cry a lot because they get overwhelmed so we know with with things that for us are just normal day-to-day -day life but for a newborn, it's just overwhelming, like all the impressions, the sounds, the scents, what they see, the, the, the skin um, sensations and everything. And they just need mama and daddy, but first of all, mama, to just feel safe and to exactly. feel like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm secure, nothing happens right now. Exactly. So when we think about this period, we have to think... Um, as a way, as a period during which the baby um, starts to learn uh, what it means to be outside of mommy's body. Mm -hmm. So if we think about the, the environment where the baby has grown for nine months, um, we, we think about something that is dark, there's noise, but the noise is kind of muffled from the noises coming from the outside. Inside, it's actually very loud, you know, because they can hear us breathing, they can hear the heartbeat. Um, they're constantly moving around in this, you know, soft, warm um, container. Um, you know, as you said, the sensations are completely different. They're never hungry because, you know, they're, yeah. they, they feed <laughs> constantly from uh, through the umbilical cord uh, and the placenta. Um, they, they don't, don't smell digest. anything. Mm, yeah. They, yeah. uh, so it's a very different environment that they're used to. So when, when they come out, everything is different temperature mm -hmm. is different in the womb they are always at this perfect temperature very comfortable they come out they're wet it's cold um you know they're it's bright outside mm -hmm. uh, a lot of noises that don't make any sense um you know they're not mm, soft environment anymore and so um what basically we're seeing is that newborns they're seeking for this kind of sensation that they have in the womb in the outside world because mm -hmm. that's what they know and that's where they felt comfortable exactly and, and it was perfect you know you're never <laughs> hungry when you're when you're tired you sleep um if you want to move you move but everything is soft the temperature is perfect 
Um, and so what they look for when they're out is to recreate a little bit those conditions. Um, and that's why they feel good when they're skin to skin with mama because the temperature, the, the, actually the, the body of the mom um, helps the newborn to regulate their body temperature. Yeah. Um, you know, they want to feed very often. So sometimes moms that are breastfeeding are saying, I'm just sit on the couch all day, you know, with the baby attached to the boob because after one hour, 30 minutes, they want to feed a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, or um, they thrive, for example, when we swaddle them when they're very little because they feel contained. They have this need of containment. Uh, they, they need to move all the time. You know, moms, they're like, I can never put him down because, you know, I rock him and he falls asleep. And as soon as I put them down, they, yeah. they're like, what is happening? And they start yeah. crying. And that's normal because you put them down probably on a surface that is not warm like on a sheet in the in the bed, um, the movement stops, they cannot smell you anymore. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so they're like, what is happening? It's kind of an alert system, you know, yeah. thinking about our ancestors living in a cave, you know, leaving a newborn unattended was not a very good idea. <laughs> exactly, um, exactly. And, and I think it's so important to know, because all these issues are, are topics in the postpartum time. So many parents tell me, well, the baby has been feeding all the time or I can never put the baby down. And they think that there's something wrong with their newborn, which actually has an influence on how they um, communicate with a newborn or how they perceive their newborn. And I think it's so important to just know all of this is completely normal. Absolutely. And the challenge is more to kind of establish a sort of postpartum life around this, these facts, which is in fact a challenge itself. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I mean, when you come home uh, from the hospital, um, some moms are very much surprised of uh, the behavior of the babies. Mm -hmm. And you're right, some moms say, what am I doing wrong? You know, mm -hmm. why I cannot settle them down? They always, they only nap on me, they only want to be on me. But that is perfectly uh, normal. That's newborn behavior. Beha mm -hmm. uh, if we think about the needs of a newborn, newborn needs to sleep, to eat, to pee and poo, um, to regulate their temperature um, and to be, you know, feel safe, basically. Exactly. Yeah. And so the best place to regulate everything is on the mom, is on mommy's arm. Um, mm -hmm. their, if their mommy is breastfeeding, the boob is right there. So the food is available. They're nice and comfy. They feel safe. Um, they feel that that's the place where they belong. And, mm -hmm. and that is just a process. They need time, you know, they, they, the only thing that they know is what was in the womb. It was very, very pleasant. Outside is not so pleasant. Mm -hmm. And so they need somebody to help them transition into this world. And this person is the mom. And so exactly. the, the first few months, um, it's normal that babies only wants to be with you. They sleep better if they sleep on you. Um, and uh, it's nobody's fault and uh, it's just biology. It's just exactly. how babies adapt to the, to the new situation. Exactly. And I think, um, so knowing that brings us also to the, to the part of, you know, how, how to kind of how to create this environment around the fact that the baby and the mom need to be together as much as possible. It's very clear that there needs to be a lot of outside help, which right now in this corona situation is even a bigger challenge because um, relatives cannot come maybe from other countries, but also grandparents here who usually um, do come and help. They can't right now. Um, so even more important to really make yourselves uh, a plan on, on how to relieve some of the stress, like for example, easy things like cooking in advance, uh, freeze your meals or establish already like, a, 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 um, um, how is it called, a delivery service for, for groceries or make sure your friends that live around you 
bring you some food to the doorstep or go shopping for you or maybe someone would do the laundry or you know all these little topics that actually um, build up and the thing is that's in general they think that uh, in the postpartum time they are home and so they can do everything and dear dads you sometimes forget that you won't sleep neither <laughs> you will be tired as well and you will be exhausted as well. And you also want to connect with your baby. You do not want to do the whole household, the shopping, cooking, uh, washing, whatever. But you want to spend time with your new family. And, and that is as important as to make sure that the mama and the baby have their space. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I was talking last night on another webinar about this. And despite this impossibility of having people over, that might not be that bad. <laughs> because it's nice, I think, when you come home um, with a newborn to have the, the core family, you know, to get to know each other. It's a time where, you know, it, you, you guys just met for the first time. Uh, you're, you don't know your newborn. You don't know what kind of person he or she is. And, um, and so it's a time where very special, where you get to, where you need to get to know each other. And so I find it uh, very special at this time that family have their special time without any other people coming in. Uh, because sometimes it can add stress also uh, yeah. to the to the to the new family. Yeah, um, and also so especially when when gra grandparents are coming and staying. So the grandparents are also always the parents of one of the parents, but exactly. not of the other one. Yeah, that itself is already quite stressful. Yeah, the dynamics can be very very stressful. Yeah, um, but it's um, so in the first few months, the role of the dad is of course to connect with the baby, but to protect the diet mom and baby. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of dads feel a little bit left out in the beginning, especially if the mom is breastfeeding because, you know, they feel that the mom is doing everything with the baby, but that is kind of normal. Uh, yeah. There are things that dads can do with the baby. You know, they can bathe them. They can give them a massage. They can do a lot of skin to skin as well. It's a wonderful way. Oxytocin is released by men as well, not only by women. Mm -hmm. um, it's a way to bond together. Um, and definitely, you know, help the mom that, of course, she's going to be tired. You know, she needs to recover from the birth. That is a major physical event. Yes. Yeah, um, even the easiest, perfect, most physiological one, you know, it's a lot of stress on the body. There are hormonal changes and all these kind of things. So the mom needs to time to recover and rest. Um, so definitely the mom shouldn't cook shouldn't worry about laundry, shouldn't no. worry about cleaning the bathroom and all these kind of things. No, and, the dad, and the dad should step up a little bit, but it's mm -hmm. even better if you have like friends that bring you food, um, laundry, you can leave the basket outside the door. They can bring, you know, the clothes back that are nice, clean and folded. Um, don't be afraid to ask for help in this time. Um, this exactly. is a very, it's a Western vision, you know, that um, we have to do everything by ourselves. In other countries, the first three months, four months, five months, are the women, they, they're not allowed to do anything. You know, they just exactly. lay in bed with the baby and they bond. Yeah. Uh, everything else is brought to them. So, mm -hmm. so in terms of um, recovery of the mom, Francesca, um, yeah, you just pointed out that it is a huge uh, impact on, on a woman's body to give birth um, on several levels, mm -hmm. uh, like yeah, all the, all the hormonal ch changes, but also maybe they have some uh, stitches or maybe they have some pain with the, with the breastfeeding in the beginning. Um, and if you talk about the recovery of the mom after the birth, what would you what would you would you say are the let's so let's say the the bullet points uh, to really keep on mind? So rest. The yes. first one is absolutely rest. Um, eat good food, mm -hmm. good um, food with good calories because you know for breastfeeding you also need to be in good, in good shape. Mm -hmm. um, if, you know, at the beginning you can have pain, but um, I know, I don't know if now the, the midwives visit uh, have changed a little bit. Can you 
go now yeah. to well home we, we we actually did home visits the whole time around mm -hmm. corona situation but we, it's a bit different because we cannot go so close mm -hmm. and we should not stay there for an extended time um, we should just go and do whatever we have to do hands on and then all the rest we do by zoom calls so that has changed a bit. Mm -hmm. um, this is also the reason why I started to put lots of midwife tips on my Instagram channel, because there are so many, uh, I know, you know, so many questions that come up in all postpartum uh, visits. And I thought that I can maybe take away like a little bit of that mm -hmm. stress of not having the midwife so often or so long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but definitely, you know, if, midwife here we're so lucky to have this opportunity to have somebody you know that comes to visit us at home even if you know with a distance not so long and then on zoom meetings but uh, midwives are a great resources i was lucky to have claudia for both my birth <laughs> thank you uh, and especially for the first one she was a lifesaver all the questions that i asked you know they're there for you and so use um use them you know <laughs> in a good way um yeah. but in general you know if if you have a doubt if there's something that you're not sure about that is normal because trust me nobody you know brings a baby home from the hospital and they're like oh i got this i'm very good <laughs> <laughs> so um especially if you're a first time mom there are going to be a lot of doubts um about if you're doing stuff right if you're doing stuff wrong so ask question don't be afraid you know of asking anything that might sound stupid it, it, it's not stupid um so rest ask for help really um forget about you know cleaning the house and uh, and you know cooking and stuff like that ask your partner for help first um and give yourself time you know mm -hmm. give be patient with yourself be patient with your baby don't feel guilty if the only thing that you do one whole day is to be on the couch with the baby on you is going to go through growth sports is going to be uh, there's going to be days where they're pretty fussy um it's normal um mm -hmm. again keep in mind that he's transitioning he's learning about this new place you guys are getting to know um each other and uh, and so it's important that you are you know take it easy really and enjoy, kind of enjoy this period even if it's going to be a challenging one uh because it's so special even if it's so challenging um and another thing, ask for help also if you have friends, um, you know, if you have people that can bring you grocery at home, if you, you know, if you feel uh, safer staying at home, just the three of you without any contact. Um, there are also services, for example, in Talville, there, there's this group that actually um, offers to go shop for you. So if yeah. you need stuff from the pharmacy or anything, um, they are there for you. So there are even in this time, the possibility to actually be helped by, by other people. And one thing that I feel that it's very, very important, um, always keep an eye on how you feel emotionally as well. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind that the first uh, few weeks is going to be a roller coaster. There are going to be days that you are like elated and other days that the only thing you want to do is crying. Yeah. Um, this is um, normal, you know, and, uh, you know, you have these huge shifts in your uh, hormones. And so this is mainly due to that. Um, and that is what we call usually the baby blues. Mm -hmm. The baby blues is kind of a physiological reaction, actually. You know, it's not that uh, some, for some mothers is more extreme and other mothers barely notice it but um it's um in research are saying that 80 percent of mom um experience a, a baby blues that and they are they are aware of these mm -hmm. this sensation and baby blues is low mood um you want to cry you uh, don't have very much motivation you just want to sleep all day all these kind of symptoms that sometimes they get mixed um, or, you know, mistaken for postpartum depression. Yeah. And the huge difference between the baby blues and postpartum depressions is that baby blues occurs very early on. So, mm -hmm. you know, two, three, four weeks after the birth. And usually it lasts for a short period of time, few days, maximum. Yeah. Hours. If something, if you feel that 
it's not going away, it might be something different. Um, mm -hmm. Don't be ashamed if you experience something like that. Postpartum disorders, not only depression, but postpartum disorders are very, very common. It's one every five women that experience this kind of disorders uh, during pregnancy or, you know, within the first year uh, postpartum. Mm -hmm. um, there are good resources out there if you feel that it's, uh, if you feel like you're not yourself anymore, if you feel that you are not bonding with a baby um, and ask for help is treatable. Um, if it's taken early on, um, you know, it can be treated without medication or anything like that. Um, in some cases you need medication, but you know, we now know that there are ways also to medicate yourself and keep breastfeeding, for example. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, um, it's something definitely, you know, not to be ashamed of because mm -hmm. it's, it's common, unfortunately. Yes. And also it's so important to know, I mean, if you experience something like that and you feel like women often tell me that their feelings are kind of like covered somehow, not, not as, as direct or not as palpable as usual. And the, the important thing is, the sooner you search for help, the faster it can be treated. If, if women wait for a very long time until they come out with it, it's sometimes, you know, it's like suffering for a long time. Absolutely. So um, usually midwives ask like at every visit or at every second visit, how is your mood? And the reason is that um, if you are experiencing something new and a bit weird in yourself, you're we are usually uh, like educated to not talk too much about weird feelings. So the midwife asks exactly because of that, because she knows that you might not bring up the topic, but she wants to open up the room for it so she can point out who are the professionals in your area to kind of be able to help you as soon as possible. Absolutely. And, yeah. uh, and the other thing to keep in mind is that we always speak about postpartum depression, but there are other um, mood disorders that are common during um, the postpartum period. The first one is anxiety. And so every mom is anxious um, on a certain extent. Anxiety per se is not a bad emotion, like all the emotion, there are not bad emotions. But if you have, for example, trouble sleeping or, you know, sometimes you're exhausted, but mm -hmm. also even when the baby's sleeping, you cannot switch off. Um, if you have, you know, uh, thoughts that are coming to your brain um, continuously and you cannot switch them off. If you're, you know, too afraid even to um, go out for a small walk with your baby and somebody else like your husband, uh, there are other signs, you know, that it's not necessarily a low mood or the fact that you don't feel this love for your baby. Um, you know, or there are moms, for example, that develop um, obsessive compulsive disorders to mm -hmm. deal with the anxiety. So if you have repetitive behavior that you didn't have before, that's also a sign that you might need help. Um, you need to be aware that if you had a difficult birth, you can have uh, what is called birth trauma. So um, you need also time to process um, your birth uh, experience. Um, and so there are many, many things that can happen in the postpartum period. The good thing is that they're all very treatable. Um, yes. The situation is not going to stay like that forever. No. Uh, it's usually, you know, um, as Claudia said, as soon as you speak up, as soon as you talk to somebody, um, it already is, is a big help. Um, and uh, uh, so if you, if you feel that something is not right, uh, don't be afraid and, and, and ask for help. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Let me just check on Facebook if anyone, if I can see anyone from our group watching, because somehow, the, somehow I, don't, I don't see any comments or I don't see if someone is watching us but if you do dear ladies 
welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't see your comments if you did write any comments on, and I cannot see your, your questions. But um, of course, I will check afterwards again if there were any questions and if I cannot answer them, I will address them after the interview to, to Francesca so that you will get all the answers later. Yeah, so what, what um, I also wanted to mention is that you, Francesca, if it's not Corona time, you actually offer uh, a special group for new moms. Maybe you would like to, to explain a little bit what it is about. Mm -hmm. um, it's called the New Mom Circle. We, I'm doing it at Arcus. Um, uh, at the, not at the moment, unfortunately, because of the coronavirus. Uh, but it's a circle for new moms or women that are in their third trimester of pregnancy um, because it's very, very important to um, connect with other women that are going through the same challenges that you are going through when you get a, a new baby. Um, and we talk about everything that is related to motherhood. Mm -hmm. fun stuff the not so fun stuff <laughs> um but it's a safe place so yeah. you know it's not just a meetup where you go and meet other moms with babies and you talk about you know how do you cut the fingers the, the fingernails <laughs> without um, cutting the fingers exactly <laughs> how many exactly. times your baby poops uh, yeah. that are all perfectly valid questions um yeah. But it's also a place where you can come and we can talk about the struggles that, um, you know, motherhood brings into yes. our life because it's a huge change mm -hmm. for women. Um, and everybody struggles at one level to adapt to the new situation. Even women that have dreamed of this moment the entire life because mm -hmm. it's a huge, huge um, change in everything, you know, um, and so we sometimes we talk about, um, you know, how our the relationship with our partner has been impacted, how our personality or our identity, sometimes we feel a little lost, we don't know who we are anymore. Um, so not necessarily things that are, um, they're going into the pathology kind of things like the postpartum depression, mm. these kind of things but also normal everyday struggles that, um, you know, the journey to motherhood uh, brings into our life. Um, there's this beautiful term that is called, that has been created in the last few years that is called matrescence. Yeah. That is, sounds a lot like adolescence uh, mm -hmm. because like adolescence is a huge time, a huge transformational time where, you know, in adolescence, you, you, you go from childhood to become, you know, it's the period, the period that transition you to, from being a child to being a young adult. Um, and the same is this one, you know, you, you go from being your uh, young single self to become a mom. Um, and it's a huge, huge uh, transition. And, yes. um, and so it, it's important that you guys are aware that it's going to be a transition and there's going to be some days that you, you say, where did my life go? Yeah, <laughs> because it's it's a big change. Um, and so I, I try to provide this space where women can come and talk about everything that is related to motherhood in a safe place, in a safe, not judgmental place um, with other mom. And, and, and it's a good uh, spot because you can meet uh, people and you don't feel so alone in your struggles because, you know, especially on social media, usually you post only the good stuff. Yeah. And so uh, you see all the good stuff of other people, but you don't see their struggles. Um, mm -hmm. And instead, everybody is kind of going through um, the similar challenges. So exactly. And I feel like, especially nowadays in the, in the more, let's say, globalized world or individualized world, um, it's even more important to really have build up your peer group and and the new mom circle is one possibility of really finding your let's say your little village of yes. of women who go through the same kind of situation and and we know from from many re from a lot of research that um, peer group is really giving support but for many women, it's not the peer group on the playground. At least for me, it wasn't. <laughs> I didn't like the playground at all because I didn't fancy the talks about diapers and poops and whatever. Um, 
but I found my own little peer group with, with two friends and their kids. And we had this very tight bond together for actually the first four years until our kids went off to kindergarten. And this was definitely a lifesaver. And um, for, for those of you who are actually not in their, let's say, original countries or are here for work or for a couple of years or just new, um, I think this is actually one really important thing to, to um, look out for because this is where you find comfort and this is where you find support and where you find um, a place where you can just let go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we have sessions where women just want to come in and vent. Um, and so other women listen and, you know, they give suggestions. Other times, most of the times I have a topic um, that I try to present if it's not one of the previous situation where somebody is really in, in distress. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's definitely something where you can find other people that um, can relate with what you're going through. Yes. Um, because it's very, very important for new moms to have new mom's friend. Mm -hmm. um, because it's a very special time and sometimes you know and sometimes the only thing you want to talk about is your baby and for other people maybe previous friend instead they're in a different time of their life and so after a while maybe they want to talk about something different exactly <laughs> instead it's important to uh, find a new network that um, you know especially as you said um, you know for expats that don't have friends or family close by it's important to have a new network um, with. Exactly. And I think also for them, you know, for actually all moms, even the moms from here, from Switzerland, they are actually the ones who are in my group now are all, uh, you're all first time moms. And usually you do not have a network of moms mm -hmm. yet around you, especially if you are the first in your circle of friends to, to have your baby. It's, uh, it's a task to find your group and look out for them already now. The ones yeah. that you would like to connect a bit closer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think, what do you think, Francesca? I think we have, like, mentioned the most important um, topics in this fourth trimester. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Let me go through my notes. Um, yeah, I think we, we cover pretty much everything. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. And if you if you guys want to know more about Francesca, I actually put her Facebook group link uh, on below, uh, no, above the, the live and also her uh, website link. So you can take a look at what she offers. And if you have any questions, please let me know, write it in the group and I will be happy to answer or to forward it to Francesca and I'm sure she will have the perfect answer for it. Okay. So Francesca, I thank you so much that you have been here tonight with me. Thank and you, Claudia, again for inviting me. That was very, very nice. Yeah, I you're welcome. <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> and uh, I must say, I'm also, I, you know, I'm so thankful that this is a, a wonderful part of being a midwife in the course of all these years i got to know so many wonderful women like yourself so knowledgeable and so open to help other women to get through this um, special period in their lives and i'm just i'm so happy to yeah to know you and to have your advice for my group now that are exactly heading towards that period Thank you so much. That makes me very proud that you actually <laughs> think that of me because you taught me a lot. So. Yeah, you and me, you too, you taught me a lot as well. So that's vice versa in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. well, I wish you a wonderful evening. To you too, Claudia. And if Thank you are all the moms there, good luck. Yeah. The best of luck for your journey. Thank you so much. And yeah, if you moms are watching, I wish you a wonderful evening and we see each other soon. Okay. Francesca, I'll stop the meeting and we'll both just fall out. Okay. Okay. I'm ready to fall out. Okay. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Ciao, ciao, Kaya. <laughs>